What is adaptive learning good for, and how does it change what happens in the classroom? For one vendor's perspective, we asked McGraw-Hill Education's experts how they think about those questions. So Matt, let's say you've got one of these adaptive learning products and you're teaching your math class. Mm -hmm. You are getting the feedback that you get from the platform. You're not an expert in adaptive learning or algorithms. You're not sure that the platform is always going to be 100% accurate, but you feel pretty good, good enough that you're comfortable using it with your students in the class. Yep. How does that change what you do in the classroom? Here's an example. I'm a math teacher, and what I like to do is have a 15-minute mini lesson followed by guided practice for 30 minutes. And every morning before I'm about to give my 15-minute lesson, I look at the data and I say, what were the five most challenging pieces of learning for the class the day before? And sometimes I say, oh, wow, I really ought to change what that 15-minute lesson was going to be. Sometimes I look at what were the things that my class mastered, and I say, oh, I don't need to teach that. Most of my class understood that. So that's one use case. Here's another one. Let's imagine I'm a history teacher, and I want to have a great discussion about the American Revolution. What I'm going to do is I'm going to assign an adaptive history experience to my students, and the good news is that I'm going to have American history buffs in the class, and maybe I'll have students who are foreigners who don't even know who George Washington was, but I can assure that by the end of class or by the end of that homework assignment, everyone has the same baseline knowledge to have a robust discussion on something like how revolutionary was the American Revolution. Where is the dividing line? What does the adaptive history product teach the students and what does it leave to the teacher? It'll go up high into bloom. So it'll certainly teach you uh, basic facts and the foundational experiences. It can also push you, ask you to think about supporting theses and things like that. But what it can't do is have a classroom discussion. You can't have a classroom discussion with a computer. But you can't have a very good classroom discussion if you're all trying to understand what Locke meant by life and liberty. And so it's going to push you to understand these concepts, to defend them, to analyze them, and then you'll be able to practice those in a larger group setting.